Good evening all. A little while back I produced a video about building an Arduino Uno on a breadboard. Uh, this is it. And uh, I'll put a link to the video up here in the top right. And it consisted of uh, these components and I also factored in I think a USB to serial converter. Now I seem to remember at the time some people thought I'd gone a little bit too far with my minimization that I'd taken out uh, some components which really do need to be on there. I think um, decoupling capacitors and also a pull-up resistor on the reset pin. But I don't think I went far enough. I mean, this 16 megahertz crystal, for example, I mean, is that really necessary? Couldn't we just take it out? Well, let's have a go, see what happens. Yeah, that seems fine. Well, let's get rid of those load capacitors as well. And uh, there we have a pretty minimal Arduino. It's still running the uh, Blink program, which flashes the LED on and off for a second. And we're down to just the microcontroller, the ATmega328P. Well, we really need that because you need something to run the program. Um, and the LED. Oh, and the um, current limiting resistor. Oh, I wonder if we could get rid of the current limiting resistor. Let's give that a try. Let's uh, whip that out and put in this LED, which has no resistor at all. Well, it's quite bright, but that seems to be okay. So we're down to just two components, the microcontroller and the LED. Now, if you're thinking that I've cheated a bit here, well, yes, you'd be right, I have cheated. Um, the crystal is no longer required because I've actually reprogrammed the chip to use the internal eight megahertz RC oscillator, resistor capacitor oscillator. And if you're also thinking that uh, putting an LED onto uh, an AVR output port with no resistor is extremely naughty, well, yes, it is a bit naughty, but actually it's been sitting here flashing for quite a while. And uh, let's just see if the uh, microcontroller is getting hot. Well, not really, it's slightly warm. It is pumping quite a bit of current, but not so much that it's gonna do any harm. So this is kind of a valid configuration. So this video is really about two things. How do you reprogram the chip's fuses to use the internal clock rather than an external crystal clock? And also, what are the implications of not having a resistor in a series with your LED to limit the current? So the first thing I need to do is to put a six pin ISP header onto my little breadboard. Arduino. Now that's the six pin header that you get on uh, most Arduinos. The Pro Mini is an exception. Uh, here it is on an Uno, six pins there. And we'll have a look at um, the wiring of those six pins. And uh, I'm also going to use this. This is a USB tiny ISP uh, in system programmer. Uh, it's got the six pin cable there. So I'm going to plug that onto my six pin header. And now what I need to do is wire these pins onto the microcontroller. So let's have a look at the uh, wiring for an ISP header. So I've got on my computer screen here the uh, ATmega168-328 Arduino pin mapping. Um, I'll put a link to uh, this page. It's on the Arduino website. I've also got over here just a generic uh, Google search for the ISP header. And you can see here that the six pins are MISO, VCC, S-Clock, MOSI, Reset and Ground. And we can pick all these signals out of the uh, chip here. They're all here somewhere. There's S-Clock, there's MISO and MOSI. Uh, ground and VCC are relatively easy to find. And Reset's up there. It's pin one. So let's wire my six pin header to the respective pins of the chip now uh, so that we can use the programming header to program the chip. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I've got VCC, red, ground, black, reset, goes to pin one, that's blue. And then S-Clock, MISO and MOSI are the yellow and white leads. Now I've taken the battery off because as soon as I plug my uh, USB tiny ISP into the USB on my computer, then VCC and ground will take power from this programmer. So let's do that now and uh, hope that it doesn't go bang. 
No, that seems to be fine. It also seems to be able to handle the current being drawn by that LED, so that's fine. Okay, now let's run up the Arduino IDE. And I'm going to do this whole thing just from the IDE. I'm not going to use any other software. So now we need to look at this page. It's called From Arduino to a Microcontroller on a Breadboard. And it shows the uh, microcontroller on the breadboard with a crystal and uh, the two load capacitors, but we're not going to bother with those. They're also using another Arduino as a programmer, which you can do, but I'm choosing to use the uh, USB Tiny ISP program. It's just a little bit neater. Um, uploading using an Arduino board, that's not what I'm going to do. Now, this is the bit that interests me most. Minimal circuit eliminating the external clock. So if you don't have the extra 16 megahertz crystal and 18 to 20, 22 picofarad capacitors, or in my case, you don't want to use them, you can configure the 8328 uh, to use its internal 8 megahertz RC oscillator as a clock source. You don't really need the 10K pull-up resistor on the reset pin either, so we remove it to get a truly minimal configuration. Now, things have changed a bit since uh, the IDE upgraded to 1.6.x. So there are now three different downloadable zip folders uh, for 1.6.x, which is what I'm using, 1.5 and the old 1.0 IDE versions. Now, when you download the zip folder, inside that is a folder called breadboard. And the place that we need to put that is in documents, uh, Arduino, and then here are all my library folders. Now there's one down here, which has a lowercase h called hardware. So let's go in there. And that's where we put this breadboard folder. And inside there, there's an AVR folder. And then in there, there are the bootloaders and this file, boards.txt. So what this file does is it defines a new board, a new physical board type in the Arduino IDE. So let me just bring the IDE across. Um, I'll just tip the camera up a bit. So in the IDE, if we go to Tools and then come down to Board, you'll see on here all the uh, standard Arduino boards. But here's an extra one at the bottom. 80 mega 328 on a breadboard, 8 megahertz internal clock. Now, with that selected, and uh, just checking to make sure that uh, the programmer we're using is the USB Tiny ISP, I can do a burn bootloader, and it takes a few seconds, and then it says, uh, writing and reading, and I'll just scroll down a bit. Uh, yes, at the top, uh, you can see writing and then reading for a verify verifying and then AVR dude, thank you. So that's the bootloader burnt into the chip. Now this is not an Arduino Uno bootloader. This is actually an Arduino Pro, a bit like the Pro Mini, uh, using the eight megahertz clock to make sure that timings are right for things like Blink. Now notice that the uh, chip is no longer flashing the Blink program. It's not one second on and one second off. It's just a rapid flash uh, on. And that's because having burnt the bootloader into this chip, I've actually overwritten the Blink program. And so this is the bootloader saying, where's my program? I can't find a program. So now what I need to do is program Blink back into the chip. Now, the important thing here is not so much that we've put a bootloader into the chip, but we've programmed or reprogrammed the fuses. And in particular, the fuses that set the clock source. So rather than using an external crystal based clock, we're now using the internal clock. So what are the fuses? Well, here's the section in the 80 mega 328p uh, data sheet, uh, section 27.2, fuse bits. And if I scroll down, there are lots of tables of fuse bits. But the one I want is the fuse low byte. And here you can see that the bottom four bits select the clock source. Now here we are in section 8.2, clock sources. We want the calibrated internal RC oscillator. The bottom four bits, therefore, are 0010, which is hexadecimal 2. And if we go back to our board definition file, you can see here that the low fuse setting is hexadecimal E2. Well, it's this 2 on the end 
that sets the fuse bits to select the internal clock. So now I'm going to use the Arduino IDE to upload my sketch. This is the standard blink sketch, uh, one second of on, one second of off. But instead of doing an upload, a conventional upload through USB and the USB to serial converter, I'm going to do an upload using programmer. So let's do that, upload using programmer. It does a full compile and then it will do an upload. Let's bring the camera down to watch that happening. Another writing and reading and another AVR do done. And uh, there's the Blink sketch back in the microcontroller programmed in using the USB Tiny ISP programmer via the six pin header. Now, one thing you need to be aware of, if you program the chip this way, it actually overwrites the bootloader. So my program is now in there, my Blink sketch, but the bootloader has now been wiped out. But not the fuse settings. The fuse settings are retained. The fuse settings can only actually be changed when you're using the Arduino IDE by burning a bootloader. And that's why I did a burn bootloader to get those few settings changed. When you upload a program, even via um, an ISP programmer, it doesn't affect the fuse settings. So we're still set to the internal RC oscillator and the LED is flashing with no crystal. So let's remove the uh, programmer. Of course that takes the power off. I'll take all these wires out as well. And let's go back to uh, a battery powered Arduino and LED. Now, what about this uh, LED with no current limiting resistor? Well, you can see from my meter that the current that the LED is drawing is just around 40 milliamps. And I've got a feeling that's the absolute maximum that an AVR pin is allowed to uh, source from one of its output pins. Let's have another look at the data sheet. So here it is in electrical characteristics, absolute maximum ratings, DC current per IO pin, 40 milliamps, and that's what we're drawing. So it's just about okay. Now you'll notice I used a blue LED, um, and that's because it has a higher forward voltage. Using a red LED is an absolute no-no, because look, we're drawing 68 milliamps uh, through that IO port, and that's really very naughty indeed. So there it is, uh, an Arduino cut down to the bare minimum number of components, just the microcontroller to run the code, and the LED to show me that it's running. Cheerio.